Hey guys, once again, the rain has chased me inside for this video. However, it's the perfect day for this because it's the last day of February. Can you believe it? Uh, and so this is a good time to talk about the upcoming jobs in the garden for March. And March can be a very busy month. So I'm going to give it to you all up front here so you can spread it out and figure out what you need to do in what amount of time. So I'm changing this a little bit from the February one. Uh, I'm separating these out into a little bit better organization. So we're going to go through the sections of planting and sowing, pruning and dividing, fertilizing, pests and disease, and watering. And so in each of those sections, I'll talk about what needs to be done in the month of March for that section. So we'll start out with planting and sowing. Um, now, trees, shrubs, vines, uh, perennials, all of those things can be planted in your area as long as the ground isn't frozen and as long as it's not flooded. This is a great time, even if it's cold, this is a great time to get those plants in the ground so they can start laying down you know, their root systems so that when the weather starts to warm up, the bottom under the ground will be prepared to send out lots of fresh spring growth. Now, if you uh, are warming up a little bit in March, uh, maybe a southern climate, coastal climate, it is okay now to start uh, putting vegetables out, direct seeding in the garden. I'll be doing a video on that uh, very shortly. Make sure your frost is passed, your last frost date is passed, and the forecast for the next 10 days looks good. But as always, this is a crazy year, um, so I would prepare to have some row covers, some fleece on hand just in case. You know, you get those in the ground, they start coming up, and all of a sudden you see a frosty night in the forecast. Uh, you can also, if you are coming to the end of your frost period, maybe you only have a couple weeks left, you can start planting potatoes. Again, as long as the ground is workable and not flooded. Uh, I actually planted potatoes in the fall this year, if you guys watched that video back in October. And I've harvested one plant, and I gotta say, the harvest for the winter is much better than it was for the ones I planted last spring. Now I had the whole soil salt issue, but still, it's really good. I've harvested one plant, so I'm gonna do a harvest video uh, next week. In fact, starting next week and throughout the month of March, I'm going to be adding a video to the weekly schedule. So right now we're Sunday and Tuesday for vegetable gardening and Friday for flowers and ornamentals. Uh, now we're going to be uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday for vegetable gardening and Friday for ornamentals. And then don't forget, every Saturday we have a Next Level Homestead video on our Next Level Homestead channel. So anyway, next week I'm going to be harvesting all of my fall grown potatoes. And then that Friday I'm going to be doing uh, potato planting. And I'm going to do, do three different types of potato planting this year. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't because I have done planting in the ground. I have done containers, but I've never done the Ruth Stout method. And if you don't know what that is, you don't even bury the potatoes in the soil. You just put straw on top and keep adding to them and take care of them that way. It's a complete no dig, easiest potato harvest ever. So they say, I've never done them. So we're gonna get that started as well. And that's all gonna be in next, not this coming Friday, but the uh, the 10th, Friday the 10th video. And then in all but the very coldest zones, if your ground is still frozen right now, uh, this isn't for you, you'll probably do that next month. But in all but the very coldest zones, you wanna finish up your bare root planting by the end of March, and that is berries, fruit trees, roses, anything coming bare root, uh, asparagus, strawberries, that all should be done by the end of March. If you're in a southern zone, that should probably have already been done, so run out now and do it. If your danger of frost is passed, you can plant citrus now. Uh, if your danger of frost is passed and you have citrus in the house or in a greenhouse or something, you can safely bring it back out into the garden. Now, most uh, of you can start your seeds indoors now. Um, a good rule of thumb is about six weeks before your last frost date. Uh, you can start starting your seeds indoors. You see my setup back there. I'm gonna take you over in a minute and show you that I got a lot of questions because it was in the background of the last video I did. So uh, most people can start seeds indoors. 
If, like I said, you're past your frost state, you can start seeds outdoors directly in the garden or in uh, trays or containers. So let's go over, I'm gonna show you what I've got. It's actually gonna, I have tomato seeds started over there and I have my dahlias that I have potted and that is the next thing. If you have dahlias in storage or if you just bought them, uh, you can start to, to put them in pots. I use little four inch nursery reuse containers um, and bring them in the house or in a greenhouse, whatever you have. I have them on heat mats along with the tomatoes and I do that to get them sprouted so I can start taking cuttings from them. It's not time to put them out in the garden yet. Uh, so I'm not starting them for that reason. I'm actually getting them started to sprout for cuttings. If you're not gonna do cuttings, then you can wait until next month and you can put them outside in pots. I'd wait to do it in the ground. They like a little warmer soil, but you can get them started sprouting and growing in pots uh, after your last frost date. So you can see all of my tomatoes have germinated nicely and eggplant, got some eggplant here. And then all my dahlias are here in the front. Now I have the heat set to 77 degrees. I have a thermostat over here. And the thing about dahlias is you want their soil to be really dry. I mean, you know how damp it is when you bring it out of the potting soil bag? That's about how it should stay because it's not moisture that triggers them to start sprouting. It is actually the heat from the heat mat. So we've got a sprout here. So they're just getting started. I can see, I'd say 25% of them have some kind of a sprouted eye on them. If you are questioning whether you should water your dahlias if they look dry to you, if you're questioning at all, then you probably shouldn't. Feel down in there a couple inches with your finger. If you feel any moisture at all, they're good for now. This is actually my moringa tray. I'm gonna grow moringa this year as a hedge. Um, there's nothing coming up yet, but it does take a couple of weeks for moringa to germinate. So this is a very simple setup. Um, I've got heat mats on the floor. Again, about 77 degrees. I've got a Viper Spectra grow light here, and I've got this light stand, which a lot of you asked about. I have all three of those things on my website under products I love. I'll link that down below. There's a lot of Viper Spectra lights um, on that link. Find one that's in your price range. Uh, find one that is in the size that you need to cover the most amount of floor space or table space. But I also have links on my website to other grow lights and I have them listed as like least expensive, middle of the road, and then the most expensive kind of pro type of light. And that stand is on there as well. The stand is, I think, about $45. I've had it for three years. Um, it's It does the job. I mean, is it super heavy duty? No, but it holds a light and that's all I need it for. Okay, so that's everything under planting and sowing. Now we're going to move on to pruning and dividing. And right now is the time to start taking out, cleaning up, pruning down uh, most of the dead stuff that's in the landscape. So whether it's perennials that grew last year, whether it's vegetables that were kind of maybe a late season vegetable that just died over the winter. I've got a lot of basil out there that I'd never dug up. I wanted to see if it actually would keep growing through the winter. It did not, especially this winter. So I have to take all of those things out. So now is the time to start cleaning out the flower beds, cleaning out the vegetable beds, uh, with some plants that are a little more tender, they might grow in your zone, but if they are just on the verge and they have, you know, frost damage or ice damage, like here, it's like things like bougainvillea and some of my tropicals. They have frost damage, hibiscus here. It gets some frost damage on the outside if you have a frost. Don't cut it off as soon as you see it. I know it's unsightly. But that is an extra layer of protection for the rest of the winter for those plants. So you don't want to take off any of that until you're past your last frost date for sure. Then you can cut it all back and it'll uh, start putting out new spring growth. Okay, moving on to fertilizing. And there's not a lot of things to fertilize. You're not going to go around and I don't fertilize my vegetable beds or anything uh, this early in the season. Mulch is a big deal at this time. Um, I'm going to put that under fertilizing because it helps with that. Uh, any of your flower beds, 
can be mulched now to start the process of the worms, breaking it down, getting it ready for uh, planting the vegetable beds. If you have raised beds, a couple of inches on top of those are gonna, you're gonna top them up, which is what they're gonna need. You're gonna notice they're probably a lot lower than they were a year ago when you first planted. Now is the time to start fertilizing citrus and avocado. If they're outside, if you still have them inside protected, don't fertilize until it's safe enough to bring them out. And then once you bring them out, you can start fertilizing them. And if you're growing hydrangeas that are blue and you like them blue, now is the time to start um, fertilizing them with aluminum sulfate. Hydrangeas only bloom blue in more acidic soils. Now we have very alkaline soil here. And so if it weren't for this false means of uh, promoting that blue color through the fertilization, uh, through fertilization with aluminum sulfate, our hydrangeas would mostly be pink. So now is the time uh, to start doing that. And I do it about every month. So I do it March, April, May, June. And at that point, the buds are starting to, to develop and I can quit doing it at that point. Um, and that will have developed that blue color in the blooms. Now make sure that you sprinkle it all the way around the plant because I have had uh, where I just throw a handful on one side. I've had a plant, one hydrangea plant that bloomed blue on one side and pink on the other. So do it evenly. As far as pests and diseases are concerned, there's not a lot to worry about here at the beginning of March. Um, by the end of March, probably gonna be on the lookout for aphids. I do have a video on how to handle aphids. Uh, I'll link it down below. The best way uh, to handle aphids really is to just spray them off with a hard stream of water from the hose. And after a few times of doing that, more and more will fall off and drown and less and less will be back on your plants. Slugs and snails are pretty active at this time of year, especially after rains. And I do have a video on dealing with those as well that I will link down below. Uh, rabbits and squirrels, they're gonna be coming out. So, well, the squirrels are already here. I haven't seen too many rabbits yet. Uh, a two foot fence has kept my cottontail rabbits out of my garden, just a two foot chicken wire fence. I haven't had any issues uh, since putting that in last year. Squirrels are a different story. Squirrels ate so much of my new crops last year, um, seedlings, and even foot tall plants. Like they just devoured all of my okra plants. I had to start again. Didn't hurt, hurt the okra supply though. We had more than enough. But something that I found that has been life changing in terms of squirrels, and I've been telling everybody that comes to me with a squirrel problem. And that is tool. Now, I can't say I've gone to very many fabric stores in my life, but for this, I have been. So this is a very thin material, um, like a netting almost. It's totally see-through, especially black. Um, they have white for wedding dresses. I'm not sure why they have black. It'd be a depressing wedding dress, but they do. And uh, what, what I use black for, or why I use black, is because once you've laid it down on the garden, you can't see it. It's totally invisible. But the squirrels do not like to have their claws in it, apparently. It feels, it catches their claws and they don't like it. Um, it works. It works like a charm. And I get the five foot wide tool because the, my beds are four feet wide and that gives them enough to cover the bed and to kind of bunch up over the plants. And I just take landscape staples and staple them down. So you put it on right when you sow the seeds, if you're direct sowing or once you plant out your seedlings, um, and then that keeps the squirrels off. I also used it to wrap my tomatoes last year. I just made little squares of it and got a clothespin, wrapped each tomato, put a clothespin on, and none of the ones that were like that had any kind of squirrel damage whatsoever. It also is an added benefit for birds. If birds, you know, tend to pick at your, your seedlings, um, beans and peas and things like that, this is gonna keep them off of that. Uh, I haven't tried draping these over any fruit trees or berry vines. Uh, I definitely will this year because sometimes that netting, the, the plastic netting that you get for fruit trees and such, that can catch birds in it. I know I had it in my mom's tree and she caught two birds, like they got tangled in it. Um, so I don't like that. Also, it's really hard to get off the fruit tree because all the little branches stick through all the netting and it's like, ugh, 
it's a it's a tough job to try to then take it all off. So this would be a lot better for that, but I will try it this year and see how it works. All right, moving on to watering. Um, really watering right now for me has been non-existent. It's been pretty great. Um, but you want to water when rains aren't adequate. Always do the finger test. Stick your finger down two inches. If it's wet, it's fine. If it's dry, it needs to be watered. You want to protect potted tulips. Tulips like very well-draining soil. I've got my tulips out on the steps of the cottage garden, and I literally just took them out there, so they've missed all the rain. But if yours have been out in the rain and you've got more rain coming, just take those in or cover them up to keep the rain off of them for a little bit because they really don't want to be wet if they haven't come up yet. Once they're up, it's fine. And mine are just, just coming up, so they're fine to be out in whatever rain we have left, which I hope isn't a ton. You also want to protect your seedlings. If you've got seed trays out, I had all those winter hardy flower seedlings that I had started out there, and they've just been getting rained on, hailed on. I mean, they've been soaked and just kind of drowning. And so Emily and I, because we still have rain coming, we took the whole table and brought it up here under the patio cover just to give them a chance to dry out. Now we only have rain for two more days and then we'll have a break. So I'll put them back out in the sun after that. And two days being under the, the patio cover, yeah, they're gonna get limited sun, but two days isn't gonna kill them. And even out in the cloudy overcast weather, they're not gonna get a ton of sun either. So uh, they'd rather have a chance to dry out and breathe a little bit than a couple of days of sun that they're gonna miss. All right, that is our list for March. If you have anything to add, please put it in the comments down below. Any questions, please put those down there as well. And uh, anything you'd like me to cover in a future video, I'd love to hear it from you. Please, if you learned something, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with a gardening friend, and I'll see you next time.